And uh, you can't have a discussion about history's heroes without casting a skeptical eye. And helping us do that is a man who sees 2020 when it comes to presidents who receive more credit than they're due. Judge Andrew Napolitano joins us. He's the author of Theodore and Woodrow, How Two American Presidents Destroyed Constitutional Freedom. I have it right here on the desk. Look at that. The hard copy. Beautiful. Oh, you're very kind. Thank you, Kennedy. All right. Well, uh, welcome back, Judge. Pleasure. Pleasure to be here. So I, I want to talk about Theodore and Woodrow. But first, I think because we're on the, the precipice of President's Day, right. we need to talk about the man who inspires so much fawning, Abraham Lincoln. He's the guy who freed the slaves. He started the Republican Party. And he's a lot of people's favorite president of all time. Save the Union. He saved the Union, Camille. Yeah. Are they wrong? I, I am a contrarian on Abraham Lincoln, and I bemoan the fact that he's been mythologized since the progressive era, since the era of Theodore uh, Roosevelt and uh, Woodrow Wilson, and particularly by the public school establishment in the United States, which almost would have you believe he's the fourth member of, of the Blessed Trinity. Uh, I prefer to look at Lincoln this way. At the time that he was the president of the United States, slavery was dying a, a natural death all over the Western world. It had just been expired by legislation in England. It has just died a natural death. That is, it was no longer economically feasible in Puerto Rico and Brazil. And the southern plantation owners were on the cusp of it dying here. Instead of allowing it to die or helping it to die or even purchasing the slaves and then freeing them, which would have cost a lot less money than the Civil War cost. Lincoln set about on the most murderous war in American history, in which over 750,000 soldiers and civilians, all Americans, died. Now, that's more uh, people killed as a result of American military action in one war than in all wars combined. That, of course, spawned Jim Crow. That, of course, spawned the Ku Klux Klan. That, of course, spawned the need for a Martin Luther King, which was a, a, a good end result from this. But the so-called freedom that Lincoln thought he was, he was bringing wouldn't come about for another 125 years because of its, its birth in violence, rather than in its birth in government violence, rather than its birth in the natural progress of human freedom. Okay, but why start a war that's expensive in blood and money? Why does that, uh, does that go to Lincoln's benefit to engage in the Civil War at all? Well, a philosopher that uh, the three of us uh, uh, agree, on, agree with many times named Randolph Bourne coined a, a great phrase called war is the health of the state, and, and it is. And even civil wars, uh, when they are fought, causes people to rally round the government that governs the area uh, that they're in. So when Abraham Lincoln uh, fought the Civil War, he was able to enact a, an unconstitutional income tax, which people paid, which was eventually declared unconstitutional by the Supreme Court. Of course, the money wasn't returned. Uh, it was kept. He and he had one of his enemies deported. Oh, sure, sure. I mean, he, he had a Republican congressman from uh, Ohio who was critical of him deported. Abraham Lincoln locked up over 3,000 people in the North who didn't take up arms against the government, but who spoke out against it and who yeah. wrote against it and who published their writings. He had utter and total and complete disregard I mean, uh, for the Constitution. Habeas corpus yeah, and, 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 and as a result of that, mm -hmm. his successors have used his behavior as examples of what presidents can do in wartime. Another reason they like war, because they can disregard those nasty things called civil liberties. Which is perhaps, I mean, that is perhaps the most damning uh, a portion of this discussion. I mean, one might give Lincoln the most generous reading of history and say, well, he had to fight the Civil War. The he had to save the Union. But again, it is, do the ends justify the means? The, the lesson of Lincoln is, well, yes, they do. We'll, we'll forgive all. We will ignore uh, all of these very serious uh, violations of the Constitution. There's no other way to describe them. Look, uh, Lincoln's soldiers burnt courthouses, robbed banks, raped women, destroyed crops, killed civilians. I mean, certainly and not they all were of them. Lauded, no, not all no, of them. And, I'm and talking this about is, Sherman's March. And, this is and they were, and they were you lauded for it as heroic. And they did this to their fellow Americans. This is hardly something out of with a, a myth of godlike stature you, you would expect to come. And yet it did because of the demonizing 
of the South. Look, it's not even altogether clear if slavery was the reason uh, for secession. Sure. But largely, the impetus for secession was tariffs well, the question that is, were being collected at southern ports and spent by northern politicians. All right, we could spend all day on Lincoln, and, and maybe at some point we will, because he is a complex man who still, yes. I mean, there's still a lot of people who love him and defend him and who say that if you are so opposed to Abraham Lincoln, you know, that is in itself racist. Yes, people will say that. Right. Uh, uh, they, they do. I, of course, reject that. Uh, let's Nora. move on to someone who... You, you who, have to be able to discuss every president with equanimity yes. without being tarred with a brush that won't come off. Certainly. What about